Uh, this has been a heaven sent week for us, uh, just being able to have a chance to have our whole team back um, and, and essentially get our legs up under us. Um, I think we've been kind of trying to figure things out, piece it together, lose some tight ones, not, sh not show up uh, in the Georgia game, which for a young team, I expected that to happen at some point, but you know, really good week for us to be able to get ourselves um, <clears throat> back focus and on the path that we were on as we continue to build this program. David, want to start us off? <clears throat> hey, Coach, I want to start off with a uh, recruiting question. You've got one of the youngest rosters in the country. What are your plans in general as far as uh, – the next signing day and how many spots do you have and what do you plan on doing with that? Uh, great question. Uh, for us, you know, a lot changes with injuries and stuff like that. I mean, we had a 21 signed who is here. She enrolled early, Aaliyah. Um, we brought in early mostly because she was struggling with, she, she had an injury before ACL. So we wanted to get her acclimated then get her working on <clears throat> just getting stronger with our doctors, our trainers and whatnot. And she's, she's coming along um, tremendously. Um, we even had a small celebration because she just, for the first time, had a fitted ACL uh, brace the whole time she's been using like a generic one off the shelf. Um, so um, we've been working with her. We also I think I think we're in dire need of of getting uh, another point point guard in here, you know. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna <clears throat> recruit a point guard. I need someone that is older though, not necessarily a freshman in the twenty one class. So I'm thinking we're gonna look at the international route because they've played a lot of basketball against. Um, um, you know, some amateur professional stuff. And so want to look at that route. And then obviously we, we're definitely in, interested in the transfer portal, uh, <clears throat> seeing how the rules work out for that. The one-time transfer can be huge for us. And then uh, we plan on bringing everybody back, you know, but I think um, as you all have been paying attention, we could possibly lose a kid or two. That's just how it works. You know, it's, that's like the new thing now. Uh, so in a perfect world, I'd like to get another big, you know, I told you all early in the season, I was, I was really sad when um, AP went down just because, you know, we would have been able to put Kira at the four, um, which is her natural position and then put, have AP at the five. And so that really kind of threw things off. And we see it now that we're in SEC play. So we're hoping she comes back uh, healthy and ready to go. Um, but that's kind of where we're thinking, a point guard and then and then a, a, a legitimate five um, to allow us to diversify our roster. You, you've mentioned how big this week was uh, for y'all to maybe just kind of focus on yourself a little bit. Can you be a little bit more specific about what areas you thought y'all really needed to focus on? And I just, I, I, a little bit of everything, you know, um, you know, but more, but most importantly, they were defense, you know, I, I hadn't been excited about the way we defended the last two games. You know, we played Missouri, we give up a halftime score in the first quarter, you know, um, and then we're able to manage it and, and almost tie the game up at a halftime, but that took a lot of work with a, with a short roster and, and, and so we don't want to put ourselves in that situation. And then, and then we go to Georgia and we give them, and they're not even a high scoring team. You know, we let them score 10 above their average. So defensively, we really needed to get back to dictate and disrupt. And, uh, you know, we got everybody back now, knock on wood. And so we, we've been like conditioning, getting up and down. Um, just having a chance to compete. I thought our competitive nature had been missing the last two games. So that I was kind of disappointed in that and needed time to work on that with our group. 
Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Parrish. Hey, Coach. Uh, where did you think at the beginning of the season this team might be, if not for the injuries, the COVID pause? I mean, there was a lot of uh, anticipation. Uh, what kind of was your projection for this point in the season? Mm, no, Paris, we, we, we're really not far off. You know, I think no injuries. I, I hate talking in hindsight, but for you, because you're one of my faves, I'll do it. You know, um, <laughs> Uh, no injuries, no COVID. You know, I, I I say we beat Mississippi State. I say we we beat we keep that fourteen point um, uh, lead that we had versus LSU in the fourth. You know, um, we 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 would have already been able to knock out some kinks. I don't know that we would have gone into conference undefeated because we would have played a more competitive schedule, which would have of exposed us in areas that we needed to be exposed in and being able to fix um, to go to conference. But honestly, as far as where we are right now, I'm, I'm quite pleased, you know. Um, I think that people have to really, the, I, this is really a true bill. Like, I, I mean, I cannot explain it more than just saying that's what it is. Let's wrap our heads around the fact that last year, playing Mississippi State, we lost 80 to 39 at their place. And we had the ball to like win the game. We had like four possessions. We had a miss layup, uh, uh, E miss a layup, Kira miss a jump shot, Netta miss a shot, just to take the lead, you know, um, before the last shot that we missed, you know, uh, at, their, at their place. And, and we had a chance to win. And so we are right where with the injury and COVID that actually we should be. I think I, I'm pleased with my team. You know, we get this one on Sunday. We in the mix in the middle of the pack uh, because no, I mean, it's only five games in. So everyone's kind of like fighting for that middle spot. Obviously, South Carolina has declared the top spot. And then then you got uh, like four teams fighting for second, third, fourth, fifth. And then the rest of us are right there, you know? So um, I'm encouraged. I, I like where our group is. We're learning. Um, they're kind of all of these experience, Paris, that we're experiencing in conference are things we probably would have experienced in a 13 game non-conference. You know, let's think about it. We get in conference. It's the first time we don't have a lead in the game. The first time we don't have a lead. It's the first time we play in overtime. It is the first time where my players have to make a shot to win the game, you know? And then it's the first time we get slapped in the mouth like we did versus Missouri and had to respond. These are all things that we're growing through. And, and I think that anybody that knows basketball, that pays attention to it, knows that We've improved. We're on the right track. I like I like where we're at. How has Maddie been for you since she's come back? Oh, uh, Maddie's been great. You know, um, I, I think the COVID hurt her tremendously, you know, because she's a freshman. And here she is trying to figure out how to navigate through things. And then her first game, we're like, all right, come back, you know, jump in this this Missouri team, you know, a complex spread offense. Um, she, Maddie is a winner. Uh, she's someone like, I, I mean, I know we have Shakira Austin and I like Kira too, but when you talk about like really wanting to, but let's face it, we may only have Kira for one more year and then she'll probably go to the league. When I'm talking about building a program, I'm talking about my freshman class. You know, we, we were playing against Georgia. I had five freshmen on the floor. At one point I wanted to throw up, but then at the other point I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Like, this is the future. You know, I was talking to Joni before the game and she said, yo, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, like you have a good team and your, your team's just, they don't know each other, they're young. And she said, two years ago, that was me. And now look, you know, so I, I again, I like where we are. I love Maddie. Maddie is a winner. She wants to be a leader of this team. You know, she came in my office the other day and just cried like she thinks she's underachieving. 
<laughs> and you love that from from a from a freshman. Um, and this week was big for her. She's been having she had two great practices. We're gonna keep pushing her. Well, try not to throw up. They might make you quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Good thing we get tested every other day. <laughs> All right, Nick. Coach, with, with the youth, I've heard you talk in the last two, three years, and even this year about sometimes having to take control on the court and kind of be like the sixth player from the sidelines. Is that still happening, or are you seeing some of your players kind of step up and take over that vocality on the court? I'm seeing them want to step up, uh, still don't know how. That's why, you know, I'm really putting a lot of emphasis on our point guard play. If you look at these teams that have been doing – really well. They have exceptional point guard play. You know, you have an LSU team that I think won two games in the non-conference. Okay. They, they looked awful, but they have a, they have a veteran point guard and, and they're four and two, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, and so these teams that we're playing against are, are old, you know, that's, they, they've been through stuff, you know, Missouri, those freshmen that made shots for them, uh, against us were freshmen last year getting their heads beaten, you know? So, um, uh, we, we need that from that point guard, man. And I, I, we need that maturity. It's not that, look, I think Mimi is giving us everything she has. Um, but I'm looking for something that I'm not getting. I love what I'm seeing with Val lately. Uh, uh, she's really been trying to step up. So they're all trying to do it but we still don't have that quite yet. And I think that's going to be the difference. If we, if we can, if we can nail that for next year, I think that's going to, that's going to sh- help us go from wherever we are, like five steps higher. I know you can't teach experience, but when they do get this first experience, what yeah. do you tell them to say, remember this, learn from this? How do you yeah. cope with that? We watch a, a lot of film um, and we show them like, Hey, this was the moment right here. Or we'll stop up in, in practice and say, like, I remember the other day before we played Georgia, I knew we were in trouble for Georgia because we were in practice and a sequence happened. We had four empty possessions. And, and then I subbed a group in and then we had two more. Well, that's usually what happens in the game. We'll rattle off six empty possessions and we don't have anybody yet that will pull people together and say, Hey, you need to do this. Let's get it. And so I stopped them and I said, ladies, see in the game, I don't have a timeout. I can't, I can't stop you. You know, like I blew all my timeouts in the Missouri game. We had the foul just for me to get some subs in uh, because I had to stop the, stop the run. Those are things we're learning to do, you know, uh, back to what Paris and David has said. Yeah, we have talent coming in. Come on guys. There are people scoring 50 points in the NBA and they're still not winning. Like that, that doesn't win. Talent helps is a part of it, but chemistry and continuity is 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 a part of it too. You know, this is the S, this is the WNBA South. You know, these teams are old and they're primed and they're ready. Eight, eight of them in the top 25. You know, they're they're not any pushovers. So, you know, just teaching them that on film, Nick talking to them, showing them those, those moments as much as I can in practice and reminding them, Hey, in the game, I ain't going to be able to blow the whistle. (laughs) David. Hey coach, uh, just kind of sticking to recruiting here. Um, You probably, and probably is probably an understatement shocked some people with the class you brought in last year, how successful you were, in the transfer market, uh, what is a special sauce to get those players, those caliber players, to come to a program that's really been dormant for a bunch of years now? Um, and I'm interested, you, you mentioned what Joni said about your team Sunday at Georgia. What do you hear from your colleagues across the SEC about what you've been able to do on the recruiting front at Ole Miss? Oh, shoot. I mean, listen – I tell you what, there's not a team that's looking at us this year in the SEC and saying that's a win. You know, there's just not a team that's looking at us. Remember last year I said, if you can't find a win on the schedule, you're probably the win. 
you know, like no one, no, no one's looking at us um, like this. And when they know it's going to be a fight, they know it's not an easy out. Um, you know, I had a coach text me the other day and, and, and say, you know, yo, there's just nobody else that would able be able to have that kind of talent on the floor in year three in Oxford. It's, it's, it's a tough gig. It's a tough thing to do in the conference that we're in. I'm just really appreciative for the work my staff has put in. Um, the sauce is, is getting people that believe in me, that believe in themselves, and that believe in the vision of the program. That's, that's a simple ingredient. You know, you have to get people that are going to take a chance on me, take a chance on themselves, and take a chance on the vision of the program. And if you study any program that's gone from being really, really bad to being really good, that's what it takes, but it, but it doesn't happen overnight. You know, I remember everybody talking about how they wanted to fire Shaka Smart and, and he's in year, what, six, I think. Um, and now they're like, this is what we envision. It takes that long. Um, to, to build it around. Actually, I think we're still a year ahead. Like I said, I mean, you guys seen us, we don't look the same, you know, the feel good story of Toots, that felt good. But I mean, even Toots saw our team and said, you know what, I'm just going to focus on academics, you know, like we, we're, we're talented, but, but we're, but we're new and, and we're in new roles. I know Shakira Austin was highly ranked, but did you know that she was fifth in minutes at Maryland? You know, they never drew up a play for her to win a game in Maryland. You know, Donetta Johnson barely got off the bench at Georgia. Now she's on everyone's scout report. You know, these are new roles. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it and taking this year and really pumped that I get another year with this same group um, in the future. But I'm not, I'm not throwing away this season by any means. We, we, we got a little bit, we got some cooking we're going to do. You know, um, but, you know, this is just where we are right now. Is it a little frustrating that you had so much success with a, a really big canvas to paint with this last class? And now your numbers are limited, so you, you can't go out and grab that many this, this next time around. Uh, for, as far as recruiting? Yeah. Uh, no. Mm -mm. Hell no. I, I, let me tell you what's frustrating, youth. Youth's frustrating. Um, the fact that they're coming back, the fact that we're going to bring Val back for another year, that's a blessing. Uh, um, so, you know, it, it, it hurts. It hurts the younger kids uh, that are in high school. Um, it's going to change the landscape of recruiting a bit. Uh, but, but uh, all right, Parrish, but for us, you know, I, I like it. I mean, the fact that I'm not on the road, you know, we, everything we do is via Zoom and, and I'm having time to really spend time with our current kids. It's been a difference maker for us. I try to look at it half full. Yeah, you bring up Val. Um, she's not one of your more talked about players, but certainly one of your most valuable assets out there on the floor. Talk a little bit about her, if you will. Yeah, you know, Val, Val is high risk, high reward, you know. Uh, sometimes Val drives me up the wall and then sometimes, you know, she makes me smile. Uh, but, but Val's uh, greatest attribute is the energy and confidence she brings to the team. We have this character, this core value thing that we judge, our players judge each other on. And out of the 14 votes for energy and presence, Val scored 12. She scored the highest. I mean, that is what she brings. The thing about Val is keeping her where her energy is positive because it affects us whether it's positive or negative. It's usually negative if she gets down on herself or because she wants to do so well, you know. Um, she wants to make up for the mistakes she just made. And um, sometimes that makes her even make more mistakes. So what we're trying to do is get Val just to focus on next play, bring in positive energy. It's infectious throughout the whole team. It gives a great level of confidence uh, to the group. And, and I think she's starting to notice it. And uh, just trying to figure out ways for her to limit her turnovers 
and to recognize how they're playing her because obviously she's not a perimeter shooter, but there are other things she can do when they go to send those doubles to Shakira or anybody else uh, where we, we feel like we can get probably like six more points from her game. Um, and she, she likes that. So just trying to get a discipline on the defensive end. Um, usually when Val makes a mistake, it really hurts us. <laughs> yeah. it, it's not like a, you know, turnover dead ball. Like it, it, it's, it really hurts us. Um, so we're trying to get her to minimize that big three that she may give up or, you know, something like that in a crucial time of the game. Finally, if you will, talk a little bit about the game Sunday against Florida and how important it is because after that one, you guys go on the road for two in a row. Um, how big is that? You're talking about cl- wanting to climb into the, kind of the middle of the pack. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a it's a big game for both teams, um, uh, but more more importantly for us, it's just a big because we need to learn how to protect home court. You know, uh, we say it, uh, but but we need to understand what that means. And so uh, for our players, I just want them to focus on playing our style of basketball, really dictating on the defensive end, um, having Florida take the type of shots we want them to take uh, for 40 minutes. And, and it's important for our growth. You know, listen, if we don't win, is it the end of the season? No, uh, but I'm trying to give my team small goals. And so our goal right now is to, to win practice today and then tomorrow so that we can have an incredible amount of confidence for this game on Sunday. But for us, we know that this is important because I think if we can turn the page, you know, and, and turn that corner a little bit more, it's going to really get us rolling uh, right where we want to be playing our best basketball and that's sometime in February. I, I said that was the last thing I had, but one other thing I wanted to ask you about, Vanderbilt cancels their season. Just your thoughts on that. You know, I never, I never judge coaches um, on decisions that they make for the betterment of their program. I know Stephanie well, and I think if that's what they decided, that's what needed to happen. You know, I'm not surprised uh, by any means that we had a team uh, opt out. And I'm, I'm actually surprised more haven't, you know, especially in the lower levels, just because I know that they don't have the support maybe that we have at this level uh, from a financial and resource. Um, so, you know, I, I sent her a text and wishing her the best and I'm sure she did what she needed to do that she thought was best for her program.